Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be looking at painting with gloss sprays and using lots of stamping in the background. So I'm starting in my 6x6 craft journal and I just had an idea. I was playing with some face stamps from Dina Wakely and um, I've kind of done a layout like this before but I was playing around with it and I think one of the reasons I thought about this sort of layout was because of the direction of the faces. I wanted to have them connecting to each other. So to do that I started off with some gesso in the background just along the middle of the page and then popped on some um, gloss sprays, this marine gloss spray I think. Now the reason I put the gesso on first was because if I had put the gloss spray on directly um, it would have sunk into the page so I don't know if you can see that with the blushing the pink at the top when it went onto the craft without the white underneath it it sort of just sunk straight in you've sort of got a darker color there but you don't really get a true color um, <clears throat> by putting the white underneath it you sort of get that true punch of color you can see also where um, the sprays resist each other and you can get some different effects so the first time I sort of poured it on and spread it out across the page you saw me use my fingers a little bit too and the second time I actually sprayed it on spread it across the page so you get a light, lighter application and then for the third one I undid the top which uh, this is the way I usually use them and just use it to spritz uh, not spritz to splatter across the back of the page um, I used the silver I think to splatter across the page and that gave me a really cool effect. The silver and the metallic gold I think are a thicker form formulation because they've obviously got them, I presume it's um, mica in it so um, it actually stands up really well against the craft. You get this beautiful shimmer across the page. I kind of wanted to it still seemed a bit floaty in the air these pieces so I wanted to ground it slightly so I'm using this little leaf stencil, uh, not stencil, sorry, stamp, and um, stamped across the bottom of the page. Once I'd done that, then I dried it. Now, the ink that I used to stamp that out with, while it's fabulous white ink, um, it's also pigment ink. It takes a little while to dry, and you can see when I put the gel medium over the top, it actually activates it and sort of bleeds it together. So just be mindful if you were doing this either stamp and let it dry completely or you could maybe emboss it in white or you could just stamp afterwards especially if you're stamping with white it doesn't really matter so um, just think about it I didn't very well <laughs> when I was doing this so um, learn from my my mistakes I also instead of stamping straight onto my page I stamped onto some tissue paper and glued it down now um, the craft journal actually takes stamping really really well but because I sort of had the gesso and I had the splatter and so on I had not an even surface to stamp on so I figured that stamping onto tissue paper and gluing it down was going to give me a smoother surface. I'm journaling across the centre of the page or using a quote across the centre of the page um, and use my wavy lines like I usually do and doing some writing in between and then I put the whites of the eyes in my um, figures as well just to bring them to life a little bit and it certainly makes a huge difference when you do that to your, your figures on the page because I wasn't particularly happy with um, the amount of white on the page because you know me and white space I decided that I was going to paint I use the gloss sprays to paint my um, images of the ladies and to try and get the skin tones happening. So I start off with some blushing and now I'm going with a bit of Sedona and mixing it together to try and create some skin tones. I really love using the gloss sprays to do this with because you can layer up the colours really really easily but because they're translucent it like acts like a glaze over the top so you've got a little bit more uh, sorry I feel like I've got a little bit more control over what I'm doing um, I can sort of put on a color see if I like it and build the color up slowly it's a little less intimidating than going in with um, acrylic paint straight away to add a little bit of glimmer to their hair and to sort of tie the page together I'm going in with some of the gilt on the um, hair to sort of give them this beautiful golden color hair 
and just drying it off. Once I've finished, I'm then going in with my Stabilo oil pencils. These are the, the thicker woodies um, and adding in some texture into the hair. So again, using those warm colors in the background to um, get some um, line work happening. Then going in with my Stabilo oil pencil, oops, well I will go in, but I'm going in with my writing to put a drop shadow around my text and it seems like a bit of a strange thing to do but this really pops the writing out from the background um, makes it a lot easier to read even though on video it kind of doesn't but when you're looking at it closely um, it just that little bit of shadow pushes it out from the background so I'd really encourage you if you're writing on your page and you've got a little bit of time to kill try putting a, a drop shadow or a highlight on your letters and see what it does um, to your page. It just certainly on my pages, I find it makes it feel a little bit more finished. Even though I sort of sit there going, I've already written this once. Why am I writing it again? Once I've finished doing this, I think I'm going to go over my images with my Stabilo oil pencil. Now I've found it, and just darken up the lines a little bit. So even though I have stamped this image. Um, just by doing this you can see what a difference it makes to the, the final piece. It gives that little bit of shading and shadow and it's really easy to do. And I'm not actually using my Stabilo oil pencil to do this, I'm using my Posca paint pen which is why it's looking really, really black. It's a good way to put in that extra line work. So um, if any of you follow Michelle Logan, this is a fabulous strain artist, she does a lot of this sort of cross hatching in her figures to add some extra detail and sh shading to her figures and it just it works beautifully. So again just going in and topping up the eyes and putting in a few highlights on my face just to finish it off. And as I was looking at it I was going, oh, I'm, I kind of like it but the, it doesn't quite look finished so I decided to go back in and at the top add some more stamping sort of just to balance it up. So. I've got some leaves coming in from both ends just to finish off my page. So this is how it all ended up. You can see how that writing sort of pushes out from the background. You can see those layers of colour on the figures and how that extra line work sort of adds to those um, stamped images as well. This isn't my favourite page by any stretch of the imagination, um, but it was a fun way to sort of experiment with the gloss sprays. Uh, I don't tend to spray them very much, so finding other ways to use them has been a real challenge for me, so that's why I've been doing a lot of this painting with them. So I hope you have a go too. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.